Hey guys, so we're back at my 1.2 Polo doing a different job. It's uh, a vacuum leak problem and um, yeah, basically it's a brake booster hose um, that is basically splitting. I mean, I think it's something that every Polo owner should really check in their car. It's very easy to do and just I think replacing it should not be time consuming at all. But basically, it's just um, it's just a hose that runs from here. This is the uh, brake reservoir, brake fluid reservoir, and I think the brake booster is probably behind here or something. But yeah, it's uh, a little um, hose that runs from there up here, along the firewall, and down here near the throttle body. This is the throttle body. Connects in there. And basically, just the ends us. The connections are all spitting. I hope you can see that. Every, every, every one is splitting. This one's got a split around the back. This one's got a split around. I mean, just look, it's just falling off. It's not fit for purpose. So yeah, if you've got a car like this, just check it out because it's it's gonna be faulty, I reckon, on most cars. Yeah, I got my spare here. It should just be a plug and play, hopefully. Yeah, so you saw all the uh, cracks in the in the vacuum hose, but this is just the uh, replacement part number, just for reference. Six Q two six one two zero four one A K. It sent me back about not much, thirty quid from um, from the dealer parts, and um, but to be honest, I was, I was trying to look for a third party one, maybe a bit cheaper, like, but I couldn't find one. So you're pretty much stuck with uh, getting it from VW. If you do, just check that the uh, it's got an expiry date here. Just ch check that it's not expired, because uh, you don't want more cracks coming prematurely. Yeah. So um, anyway, I mean the symptoms for this vacuum leak problem. You know, here's a brake servo boost, brake booster, servo hose. So I mean, obviously. Uh, reduced brake function which to be honest I'm not completely sure if I even have that I mean the brakes do come on a bit heavy sometimes like as in they don't do much when you first press them but then they come on all at once after so hopefully this will kind of maybe make them a bit evener if that's the right word but anyway I was yeah I identified it because I was trying to look for um, you know, I've been struggling with a problem with a rough idle. Not that the RPMs go up and down, but just that the car shakes a little bit at idle. And um, yeah, so I was just looking online. One of the things you know that cause rough idles is vacuum leaks, of course. And uh, yeah, I, I was just looking about for you know for uh, problems. And I just yeah, just pretty much instantly came across this. I mean, uh, if you've got a polo, you should probably check it, you know, if you haven't already, you know. I'm sure there's probably had a lot of polos out there with busted cables. And actually, um, I was checking uh, to see uh, recalls, etc. And um, the polos, saloons, and the, I think, is it Caddy? I don't know something polo something else but they both had recalls um, for this problem the manufacturer's fault with the brake booster hose and uh, I don't know why the hatchbacks didn't get recalled I don't know maybe it didn't affect braking performance that much but yeah it would have been nice to get it done professionally and maybe save 30 quid but anyway that's life so I'm just gonna go through yeah uh, hopefully I don't know if it's going to need any tools to be honest. It really doesn't look like it. Maybe a flat blade screwdriver. This is just a thing there. And this looks like it just clips in there. It's got a bit of serrated or whatever ends to give it a better connection. But yeah, I'm hoping that it's just going to clip in. Apparently, it's a really easy job. So, anyways, I'll film that. Yeah, so we're by the uh, brake fluid reservoir part. So it it was like this, right? So um, to take it out, basically I just removed this. I mean, it's the easiest. 
and then I rotated rotated this the connector like that and I just took a flat braid screwdriver pulled pulled right down on that side like that and then pried up with the with the screwdriver like that but be careful of these brake lines yeah and then it just kind of popped out like that and uh, just remember when you put the other one back in make sure it goes behind this how it was from the factory yeah sorry this is the best angle I could get for this side but I'm just gonna put the uh, it's this this one here I'm just gonna put the uh, the flat face screwdriver behind here get some leverage and then just kind of wiggle it out And yeah, it's just as easy as that. I mean, it just came out. And that's what it looks like when it's off. Cool. Okay, this is the new one. Hopefully it just snaps back in. Yeah, that was really easy. Just uh, push it in and then just give it a little wiggle just to make sure it seats properly. Yeah, and get your new one in. That one's just as easy, just a little bit of wiggling and rotating and just get it back to where the where you can see the dust and stuff was where it was from the factory. And yeah, that's it. And uh, don't forget to clip it in the toes just to stop it moving about, otherwise you're gonna get a big rattle. And then that's it. From there to there. Done. Yeah, so this is the remains of the uh, vacuum hose. I mean, you can see almost every s seam is completely split. Really was bad. I mean, uh, if you've got a polo like this, I mean, you, you really have to check it. You know, it's probably causing some problems in your car. Um, a couple of words on the installation. I mean, it really was an easy job. I mean, all you really need is, is like a basically a pry tool like a screwdriver flat blade screwdriver or whatever and you should be good to go I mean it, it's just about as easy job as you can do on the car to be honest um, oh yeah just a couple of words this this was on the brake um, reservoir and I mean when it's in there and you put the put the uh, screwdriver at the bottom here but don't don't damage the um, the seal on the side of the firewall. Um, just just put it under there and then just pr uh, lever down with your finger um, on the top and it should just pop out. I mean you don't want to really damage the rubber seal because it causes cause a lot of problems. Um, and even on this side by the um, by the throttle body end I mean you, I was at the beginning I was prying here on the rubber but it acts as a bit of a shock absorber so it's uh, kind of difficult to um, pry out. So if you put your flat braid in between the rubber and the plastic and then pry directly on the plastic, it will come out uh, pretty damn easy. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I've been, uh, but this, this actually, this, this uh, hose, this solid hose is really not in bad shape. I mean, it's, it's not brittle or anything. It's literally just the ends where it's where it's stretched. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, so when I when I turn the uh, engine back on for the first time, it would literally just the RPMs would go up, and then it would stall out. 
um, when I pressed the accelerator, it was I could keep it at like 2,000 RPMs or whatever, but as soon as I'd let go, it would just stall out. And I'm I, I'm pretty sure it's because the uh, the ECU, the the onboard computer, had kind of um, you know adapted to the fact that this this vacuum leak was you know constantly there. So I don't know if it was letting too much air into the engine or too little air, I don't really know, but it was basically it was it was still in that in that uh that mindset kind of and it was just calling causing the engine to stall out. So uh what I did I did a um I I cleared all of the fault, fault codes, even though there weren't any, but I just did it, just apparently it, it helps to reset the ECU. And I also did um, did a backdoor kind of ECU reset by uh, taking the battery terminals off the car and uh, joining them together with a bit of cable. Um, I actually used speaker cable, just cut the ends off, um, cut the insulation off the ends, and then just wrap them around the terminals for about 10 minutes or whatever. I'm, I'm sure it really doesn't take that long. But it's um, a capacitative discharge, I think is what they call it. And yeah, that actually, it, and then um, then the first couple of times when it was starting, it would uh, it would under it the RPMs would would kind of undershoot a little bit. Like when I come to a stop, put it in neutral from like just say I'm in first and I put it in neutral, the RPMs would undershoot below 750, and then kind of go up and then undershoot and then go up. But I mean after about three or four, you know, times starting up it was fine and it's been like that for like the last few days so it was, it was good um, yeah so and uh, did I notice any difference I mean uh, I don't know I mean the brake braking seems the same one thing I did notice is the the, uh, the rough idle that I've been experiencing it's got like 50% better kind of um, there's still some rumble but it used to go through like stages of where it was fine and then would rumble a bit more and then be fine and then rumble a bit more. So I mean and now it's just flat so it's, it's, it's kind of perfect for what I want. And uh, yeah so I mean in terms of braking uh, not much. Um, I did notice also when first starting up the car like on a cold start now basically it just goes straight to 750. Before it used to kind of undershoot and overshoot a little bit, um, but now it just plops straight at 750 and doesn't move. You know, when I start up in the morning or whatever, which is uh, it's kind of good. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm be I'm gonna post a, some more videos um, about oil changes, coolant changes, probably brake fluid changes and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, if you're interested, check back and uh, I'm sure I'll have some more videos coming out soon. Cool. Thanks. Bye.